Okay, let's try one. Rock and roll. It's good. We'll be good now. All right, we're good. It's going to be a fun record. Yeah, the sun's coming out. Why don't we take it from the bridge out? Let's do it. Great. It was a clam in there. <laughs> life is music. Music is life. I'm Simmy Stone, and I am a singer, songwriter, and performer. I'm writing songs, but I remember the first concrete song that I wrote was in fourth grade. As a typical child of Woodstock, it was an anti-war song, and we'd sing it to our friends on the playground. And I haven't stopped since. I call it Mountain Motown which is my own way of describing it because, you know, when people ask you what your music's like or what the record's like, or Northern Soul, my friend Clip told me that he's like, you know, girl, you do, you're making Northern Soul music. You should do anything now that I got this little ring. Yeah, baby, I can't wait to say I do. I do. I do. I'm inspired by love. I'm inspired by anyone you can think of, you know, from the Rolling Stones to Arcade Fire to Aretha Franklin. You know, it's just that feeling, that feeling of elation when you hear a song, that adrenaline rush of, of goodness. That's what inspires me. David inspires me, and David Barron is the best. Four, we're off. Great, perfect. It's amazing when you watch the drummer how things happen. <laughs> My thought about Simi was she had everything. She had all the talent, she had all the instrumental ability, she had everything, uh, and that we just had to find a voice for her that, that could work on a project level and help her establish uh, herself as a solo artist. I think Simi and I came from Similar backgrounds to some extent. She's born and bred in Woodstock. I lived in Woodstock in the 70s with my dad and my mom, and she's a, a black Jew, which I can relate to having worked with Lenny a lot and sort of seeing that sort of cultural gumbo, which, uh, you know, I'm part of and she's part of. It makes me relate to her a lot. We relate to the same music. We both love Carole King and we both love Motown. We both love Sly. We both love that emotion that comes from a lot of the music we grew up listening to. Well, David is so much fun, and I feel like he's literally like the brother that I never had. And so many of the time when David's writing, or I'll come in and he'll have written, he'll be like, oh, I got this part of a song, and it's exactly what I'm going through, you know? And it's almost like he can read my mind. It's so crazy. We originally wrote a song for a group in England that was making a record, and it was Good Girl, but it was from a guy's perspective of, you know, he was going with this chick, and she wasn't, you know, the, I don't know how to say it without, without sounding cruel, but she, you know, she had been around. You know, sort of a total ho. I mean, that was actually the original lyric had ho in it, which is terrible, and I shouldn't admit it, but it's true. I think that the band fell apart or the, or the label dropped them, but David and I ended up loving that song and loving writing together. So he was like, I want to make your record, and then we just... It just happened, like it just was one of the things that just happened. And we just ended up writing all these songs and it was corresponding with me being in therapy and just going through a lot of self-analyzation. And it came out in, in a funny way because life is funny. This is David's favorite trumpet part that he's been waiting to record literally since he wrote this song. <laughs> yeah, for over a year. So he's hiding his excitement, but yeah, he's so gonna sound excited. Like, it's going to sound like the ba bird background. It's true. It's yeah. true. It's going to sound like background. <laughs> I love those So hands. this is an exciting moment. For Dave. For David. Simi was in a lot of rock bands, was a very hard partier. And when she came back to the Woodstock area, she kind of felt like she had come home. She really sobered up. She 
put her dreams first. She got and 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 all of that stuff is really what the album is about. You know, now I'm gonna really be the person that I want to be, and I'm I'm gonna get rid of some of my demons. I mean, that's in a lot of the songs. It's in Good Friend. Um, it's in Bitches Fly. It's about how you can um, get caught up with the wrong people. And that I call that, that type of person a bitch, whether it's a man or a woman. It's, it's just a funny, fun way to just say, you know, goodbye trouble. Hello good times, goodbye trouble. That's my new motto. <laughs> I think I have the sickest band, at least on the Eastern Seaboard and possibly the globe. <laughs> but uh, such beautiful people and so talented. Sometimes I just have to do a double take and like pinch myself a little bit when we're rehearsing or recording. Zach Alfred is playing drums. Such a sweet person. So dedicated. Fantastic drummer. He's played with everybody from Bowie to Springsteen to Gwen Stefani. He's a massively talented person. He has a tremendous sensitivity to music. And then Sarah Lee, who's also been with us from the beginning, who's integral to this entire process. A brilliant bass player who's discovered by Robert Fripp and was in the League of Gentlemen. And played with everybody from the B-52s, with Zach actually, Ani DeFranco, a gang of four if you can believe it. She's such a caretaker, so when we're working, she's like a little mama bear. You know what? Something along those yeah, lines? Yeah, uh, play it with me. Three, four. Gail has joined us, Gail and Dorsey, and Gail is obviously a multi-talented, fantastic singer and an incredible bass player. She's playing guitar with us, though, and Gail uh, uh, plays with Lenny right now, which she also um, has played with Bowie. She's played with almost everybody you can name that's great, <laughs> <laughs> including Olivia Newton-John, her favorite. <laughs> Delightful Danny Bloom, shaved head and all. It helps him think better. He played guitar on the record. Uh, he's incredible. Nice, Danny. We have an amazing horn section in the band. Sam Kulik, trombone, very cool cat. So talented. I mean, I can't believe the talent. You take a break this time. And Tony Aiello, who plays sax and Barry sax. The way he plays his horn. Smoking and they both have the same color hair. We've been so lucky to the people who have wanted to be part of the record, not even just because it was a session or whatever, but because they wanted to genuinely be part of the music and people have really responded to it. Woo! Yeah! Put some reverb on that. Dude, there you have it. I just feel so fortunate, endlessly grateful. I can't believe I can even call them my friends. It's so crazy just talking about it. Let the party go on. I might miss my flight. Yeah. A little bit of sunshine. A little bit of magic. I think playing live has been one of the most useful and interesting production process I've, uh, I've ever been through. I mean, I, w I would recommend it. It's the way bands used to do it. There's nothing quite like playing a song that's not working for a crowd of people. Like halfway through the song, you're like, oh, this song doesn't work as well as I thought. It's an incredible feedback loop. And the songs just improved and just became different. And we just felt like we had to re-record several of the songs, and we did. And they came out so much better. Great. Very, very good. It's helped us really develop these songs and sort of develop a sound and a uniqueness. To make us strong. You know, we kept thinking we were done with the record, but then we, we couldn't stop writing. I mean, you have to work. You have to work on songs, but uh, they're me. The process of making music with the Simi and the band is that it kind of brings together everything I love about music making, from the emotional impact of writing a song that you love to playing it with people that you also love and respect. I mean, it's really, it's a gift to be able to do this on any level. Whether we're successful or not, I feel like we are successful. It's a good little record. A little masterpiece of sorts. Even if 10 people love it, then uh, we've done a great job, <laughs> you know? I'm Simi Stone, and I hope you enjoy the record. I hope you love this record. 
because the record loves you. <laughs>